Iran's foreign minister stressed Tuesday his country will neither delay nor rush its response to Israel's first-ever open attack on his country. Abbas Arachi vowed Israel will face consequences for the attack during a meeting with foreign diplomats in Tehran. The Israeli regime will face the consequences of its miscalculation about Iran's power, capability and the willpower of the Islamic Republic of Iran, he said. Israel attacked military targets in Iran with pre-dawn airstrikes Saturday in retaliation for the barrage of ballistic missiles the Islamic Republic fired on Israel earlier this month. The Israeli military said its aircraft targeted facilities that Iran used to make the missiles fired at Israel as well as surface-to-air missile sites. The attack damaged facilities at a secretive military base southeast of the Iranian capital that experts in the past have linked to Tehran's one-time nuclear weapons program and at another base tied to its ballistic missile program, satellite photos analyzed Sunday by the Associated Press show. However, Arachi said the attack only caused limited damage. Limited damage was caused to some of the points hit and necessary measures were taken immediately to restore the damaged equipment to operational state, he said. Arachi also insisted that Iran is not seeking conflict or war, but rather stability and peace. چنان که بیشتر پیشتر از طرق مختلف هشدار داده بودیم جمهوری اسلامی ایران با ابتنای بر حق ذاتی دفاع مشروع وفق ماده 51 منشور ملل متحد حق قانونی خود برای پاسخ مقتضی به این تجاوز آشکار را کاملا محفوظ دانسته و رژیم اسرائیل عواقب اشتباه محاسباتی خیش در مورد, در مورد قدرت توانمندی و اراده جمهوری اسلامی ایران را در خواهد یافت البته در انجام این مهم جمهوری اسلامی ایران نه تعلل خواهد داشت و نه شتاب زده عمل خواهد کرد جمهوری اسلامی ایران بر خلاف رژیم حاکم بر اسرائیل به هیچ عنوان خواهش تن... خواهان تنش درگیری و جنگ نیست و دستان خود را برای برقراری یک ارتباط سازنده برادرانه و صادقانه با کشورهای منطقه با هدف برقراری ثبات، امنیت و آرامش در منطقه دراز می کنم. با توجه به آمادگی و خوشیاری نیروهای مسلح جمهوری اسلامی ایران و عمل کرده به موقع پدافند هوایی کشور خسارات محدودی به برخی نقاط مورد اصابت وارد آمد که بلا فاصله اقدامات لازم برای بازگشت تجهیزات صدم دیده به مدار عملیاتی صورت پذیرد. Russia and the United States traded accusations on Iran's role in unrest in Mideast at the United Nations on Monday. Addressing the Security Council, Russian Ambassador Vasily Nebenzia said Israel is intentionally raising tensions with Iran, despite signals from Tehran that the country is ready to refrain from further spiraling confrontation. Nebenzia accused the U.S. of shirking its responsibility as a permanent member of the Security Council by assisting in Israel's attacks on Iran. We're call on the United States to be responsible L and allow the main UN body to use all of their tools at their disposal disposal to stop the conflict. The US pushed back, saying Russia's support for Iran comes because of an increasing reliance on Iranian weapons to sustain its war in Ukraine. We have the collective responsibility to prove Iran wrong, even in the face of action by one member of this council, Russia. We must impose costs for supporting terrorism and undermining international peace and stability, U.S. Ambassador Linda Thomas-Greenfield said. The United Kingdom, meanwhile said Iran must stop its aggression in the region and said it is gravely concerned by the legislation voted on in the Israeli Knesset which seeks to curtail UNRWA's ability to operate in Gaza. В этом контексте глубоко обеспокоены непрекращающиеся 
и нарастающей взрывоопасной эскалации между Израилем и Исламской Республикой Иран, которая создает реальные угрозы стабильности и безопасности в регионе. Настойчиво призываем все вовлеченные стороны к сдержанности, прекращению насилия и недопущению развития событий по катастрофическому сценарию. Всем протагонистам важно найти в себе силы и мудрость выйти, наконец, из этой спирали неконтролируемой эскалации. А после серии политических ликвидаций, включая убийство главы из полсовета Хамас Хании, генерального секретаря Хизбаллы Насралы и ряда других лидеров противостоящих Израилю движений, на Западном Иерусалиме пытаются всеми силами втянуть в конфронтацию и Иран, проявляющий исключительный исключительно в данных обстоятельствах сдержанности. Сложно избавиться от ощущения, что в Западном Иерусалиме сознательно идут на обострение, несмотря на сигналы Тегерана, о готовности воздержаться от дальнейшего раскручивания спирали конфронтации. При этом призываем Соединенные Штаты ответственно отнестись к своим обязанностям постоянного члена Совета Безопасности и позволить, наконец, главному органу ООН ответственному за поддержание международного мира и безопасности, использовать весь имеющийся у него инструментарий для остановки конфликта и выполнения имеющихся профильных резолюций по ближневосточному регулированию. And because Russia is increasingly reliant on Iranian weapons to sustain its illegal, unprovoked war of aggression against Ukraine, Iran believes this council will have no choice but to look the other way. We have the collective responsibility to prove Iran wrong, even in the face of obstruction by one member of this council, Russia. We must impose costs for supporting terrorism and undermining international peace and stability. So today, our message must be clear. We will not allow the region's future to be dictated by Tehran and its proxies, whose actions before, on, and since October 7th have put millions of innocent civilians at risk. Today, the United States' message for Israel remains clear. We will always help secure its people and territory from Iran and its terrorist proxies and partners. Our message for Iran remains clear as well. Should it choose to undertake further aggressive acts against Israel or U.S. personnel in the region, there will be severe consequences. We will not hesitate to act in self-defense. Iran should not respond. All sides must exercise restraint. No good can come of pouring more fuel on the flames of this escalating cycle of violence. We have been clear that Iran must end this support. All our efforts now should be on breaking the cycle of violence. Let me be clear. A regional war is in no one's interest. We're also gravely concerned by Israeli Knesset legislation voted on today, which seeks to curtail UNRWA's ability to operate. Israel must abide by its obligations and ensure UNRWA can continue to provide essential services to those suffering in Gaza and the West Bank.